uh, we talked uh, this morning at uh, Pastor TJ came down with uh, something yesterday, uh, and he texted me probably about five o'clock yesterday afternoon. He said, are you still planning to come to Cornerstone? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, man, I got a favor to ask you, you know, and um, I've kind of come down with something. Can you speak? And, you know, and so we have this project going on with them with the backpack thing and, and, uh, and, and all that. So I'd plan, we plan to be there to be, to support this project uh, this morning. Uh, but, uh, and last night we joined, I went to Sullivan, Indiana to support coach Mahurin. If anybody was around when coach Mahurin was, uh, went through his ordeal, we was able to be a big help to him and his, his life at that point in time, we hadn't seen him for four years. Um, you know, and he is, uh, back in Indiana. Now he moved out of state for a while. And, and, uh, the situation is he was, he was Caleb's basketball coach at Ellettsville high school at Edgewood high school and got in some trouble and, uh, was fired, removed from his position as principal and, and uh, coach, uh, through, through our life in a, in a whole, cause we had made some moves in our life that, that was based upon, you know, some, you know, some things that we seen in him. Uh, and then we found out there were some things in him that we didn't see, you know, and, uh, but we was able to do ministry, uh, in that, in, in that man's life and in his family. And, and, and we realized it wasn't about basketball at all. Uh, it was about a soul. It was about a person who was without Christ, uh, and needed, needed redemption and needed, uh, uh an encounter with God. Uh, so Joy and I was down and so I didn't have time to really prepare uh, anything for this morning, but I had prepared something for tonight. And so I, I had to, I had to deliver what I had for tonight this morning. So tonight I'm going to kind of rehash a little bit of what I uh, went over with the church this morning, but, but then uh, I'm going to take it a little bit further into more scripture. Um, kind of was landing off of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 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 God put on my heart relationships um, this morning and whether it's a relationship between a husband and wife or whether it's relationship between uh, parents and their children or whether it's relationship between brother and a brother or sister and a sister um, relationships are hard work you know um, and relationships are can be tough and and, 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 um, God put this message about run, um, on my heart, uh, in regards to relationships, uh, this morning for Cornerstone Community Church. And I'll be honest, uh, I had been, there's a couple of couples at Cornerstone since we've been working with them that have, uh, reached out to me for some type of counsel or some type of prog progressive help, um, and, some areas of their life and, and and one of the couples married couples is having a really hard time and 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 so i, I kind of was thinking about them uh when when god put this message on my heart and they wasn't even there you know and so as i was speaking this morning i, I you know I said, this is for somebody you know this is for somebody and and I, and i think really oftentimes it's for all of us you know what i mean um, you know, and, and we have struggles and we wrestle and, and, and this and that. And, and, uh, you know, um, Hebrews 12, one says that since we have, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance, the race that is marked out for us. You know, and and what I shared this morning with 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 the church was is is that this this African proverb uh, that I came across this week um, that that says this it says if you want to run fast, run alone. If you want to run far, run together. And. I thought about that in, in, in regards to relationships. And I thought about that in regards to my past relationships with, with my wife and past relationships with, with guys that God's given me the opportunity to be able to minister to. And then, 
uh, in regards to couples that we've had an opportunity to be able to share with and speak life into or, or to be able to do counseling with. And, and, and oftentimes, man, it's, it's, you know, we're all going, we're going in different directions and, and we're going so fast and we're, we're, you know, that, that we kind of find ourselves, even though we're still married or even though we still have a family or whatever, we kind of just, like I said this morning, we find ourselves in the same room in two different worlds. I may not even be talking to anybody on the other end. I'm just, I'm just Googling and searching and news feeding and, and, you know, and scrolling. And I mean, you know, I'm in, I mean, in, in a 30 minute period of time, man, I can be in 50 other people's business. You know, and and completely be forgetting or missing my life and my affairs, and the callings and the mission and the purpose that God has placed upon on my life, and and you know, and and so I'm not saying you know throw everything out the window necessarily, but but He's saying look at look at our life, examine ourselves, and the aspect or the idea of let us throw off everything. That hinders, in other words, I had to be willing to take some personal blame and some personal responsibility for lack of communication or uh, lack of growing or lack of moving forward or, or you know, and, and I, I just used uh, Joy and I's life as, as an example um, this morning because I think that sometimes relationships and relationships are love grow towards one another can grow cold. You know, I mean. God can put people uh, in in your life that you really love and you really appreciate, and something happens, man, and then it's kind of like you know, you don't really, you know, you know. I mean, they, they hurt you, say something to you the wrong way, they say, it, and, and maybe no ill intention was met, maybe no, you know, it, it wasn't meant to end that way, but yet we, we, we just we begin to, our love begins to grow cold towards friendships. I mean. Uh, towards couples, towards children. I mean, children towards parents. I mean, you know, I mean, you watch the news these days. I mean, you're hearing about nine-year-old kids shooting their teachers, 12-year-old kids stabbing their moms. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, yeah, those things have, have, have kind of always happened, but my goodness, you know, and, uh, you know, I look at this, this passage uh, in Hebrews 12, uh, verse one, and, 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 and I asked some questions, you know, uh, what kind of race uh, do believers run? You know, I mean, do we run a solo race? I mean, is it, is it supposed to be or meant to be all about me or, you know, and me and my four and no more and, you know, or, or is it supposed to be uh, something that we're in the long haul for and that we're supposed to be running together and in unison as much as possible, right? That's something Don Sink used to always say, man, just, just be as honest as you can. <laughs> that's, that's kind of, that's kind of what he would, what he would say. And I, I think that, that he had a lot of wisdom in the fact that, that, yeah, I would like to hear all the truth and it would be really good and helpful for you if you would just come out with all the truth, but there's still a part of us that just can't let it all out. So won't you just be as honest as you possibly can, you know? Um, and, um, you know, as Christian people and Christian believers, I think that for relationship purposes, man, it's good, uh, for us to be as honest as we possibly can, uh, with one another. And, you know, when we hurt, offend, or uh, I don't think that our goal as Christians should ever be to maliciously maim one another. You know, I mean, I mean, it, it's, you know, oftentimes, you know, I, 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 I have to speak into guys' lives about their planning, you know, and, and oftentimes my idea of a good plan is not their idea of a good plan, you know, and my goal isn't to maliciously maim you or to maliciously offend you or to maliciously hurt you. But sometimes people on the outside may have a little bit better of a perspective from something that, that that's happening. Um, and, and, and we, our views can be a little bit skewed. And, and so what happens is if you don't agree with, or it can happen on both ends. Well, I, you know, since you don't agree with the plan that I think God has for you, then, you know, and, and now on the other side of that, it's like, well, you know, I mean, 
you don't agree with it. You don't, I just mean, said, you don't agree with me. You don't like me, you know, and, and both sides, it's kind of farthest from the truth, you know? Um, and, and so I look at that and, and, and I say, who's, who sets, who sets the race parameters, you know, because, because it says that the race is marked out for us, you know? And, and so who, who gets to really dictate, you know, I mean, who, who really gets to, I, I mean, I, who am I to really look at God, my creator, the creator of all things. And, and I mean, the God that, that brought gnats from the dust. I mean, he, he brought, he brought plagues of frogs from where, I mean, he brought locusts from where, I mean, he brought blood to the river from where, I mean, you know, he, he's, he, he, he's, he's so much more capable, um, he knows so much more uh, about where he wants us and how he wants us. And, and yet we still have our uh, responsibility in all this uh, to find ourselves aligning ourselves with him and with his purpose and with the careers that he has for our life, the directions that he has for the, pro the projects that he has for, 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 you know, for our ministries and, and, uh, you know, and, and uh, I asked myself a, uh, another question, and, and is, is it a race we define, and is it a race that we purpose for ourselves, you know? And, 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 and I think that oftentimes when we're running fast, you know, I mean, when we're really running fast, we, we oftentimes find ourselves running aimlessly, you know, and, and we, we find ourselves in that alone and what happens would you see that they begin to isolate and distance and separate and, and 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 then they're left to what they're left to their old way of thinking or their old thoughts or you know and and i think it's good to to be able to get along with god but but I also think that 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 you have to be careful that you you're not purposely distancing yourself from god's people you know what i mean and 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 you know i mean um because I, I think that uh, um, God has a better idea of what community is than, than I could ever try to develop or make. I mean, I think we, we had the idea of let's create a place to belong, you know what I mean? And let's develop a community and a team and, and, and help and, and, and all that. But, but at the end of the day too, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I can't create all that, man. I don't, I don't have it in me. It's, I just don't you know. God's going to have to do it. And he's going to have to put it in people's heart to want to participate, want to be a part of that. Unless God puts it in your heart, it's just driven by man and it won't, it won't, it won't go, it won't go anywhere, you know? And, um, so, you know, I, I you know, I, I look at, you know, um, the message that God gave us this morning for, um, Cornerstone Community Church. And, and I think, you know, that's, that's a message for all of us, you know, it's not just for, cornerstone it's it's for all of us no matter what place in in, in this this life that that uh, that we're on and and uh you know i talked about uh how our love can grow cold in relationships and i gave reference to that in 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 mine and joy's uh life and, and and how we met and we met wrong we did it wrong we did we did everything we did everything from the time we met backwards and wrong we just did we 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 met in a bar we 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 used drugs together we drank together we entered into sexual immorality almost oh the same day i mean it's you know i mean we did it wrong we did it we did it all wrong and and if i was to to be ministering to to men and i say you know it's um you can't look at a person's life and say, well, you did it like that. So I'm going to do it like that. And I'm just going to hope that it works out like your life did. I'm telling you, man, it was miserable for a long, long time. And and it's just by the power of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God that, that, that our marriage, that our marriage and our relationship even survived it, you know? And, um, you know, there was times in the early part of our, our coming together, man, with one another that, that she didn't really even like me, you know, she thought I was arrogant and she was right. She thought I was really prideful and she was right. You know what I mean? And, 
and uh, cocky. That was her word. I was just really cocky. And yeah, you know, and uh, I showed up to visit her one night and, and I didn't know this at the time, but uh, she hid in the garage and said, tell him I'm not here. <laughs> You know, and, and so her, her testimony now is looking back is it had to be God. Cause I didn't even really like you, you know? And, and, and I think that that's just, that's just evidence of how, how God, when he has a plan and a purpose for your life, how he can turn things around that you, he had a purpose for my life and he had a purpose for her life. And, and he had, uh, the place that he wanted us to be and a place that he wanted us to serve and. And, and people that he wanted us to minister to and, and, and projects that he wanted us to be a part of, you know what I mean? But, but we had, you know, we had to say yes to it too, you know? And, and so we went through years and years of, of, you know, just sin. I mean, just misery um, to such a degree and to such a point, man, that, that what love we had developed or lust that we had developed for one another uh, it began to grow cold, you know, and, and she began to, she began to be disgusted by me. She didn't, she didn't want me to touch her. She didn't want me to kiss her. She didn't want me to really, I mean, she was just disgusted, you know, and it can work the opposite way. I mean, you know, it can work the opposite way with a, with a, with a man and a woman, you know, and, um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, she, she was, she was done. You know, and, and, and so I've talked to a lot of couples and, and that are in that same kind of place and that same kind of scenario. And I, and I know at that point in that time in my life, man, I mean, I know, I know that she couldn't be God or be King or be Lord or, or, or be an idol in my life. But, but man, I knew that there had to be, there had to be something that was more important and more valuable or, or, you know, I mean, there was something about her saying I'm done that moved me to change. And, and so it makes me wonder, you know, in relationships when, when, when they grow cold or, uh, you know, what kind of relationship do we really have? You know what I mean? And, and, and so when things get to a point and to a place to where it's like, you know what, man, I mean, do it, do I want to repair it? Do I want to fix it? Do I, do I want to do whatever I can to, to mend the fence? You know what I mean? Because when I think about our relationship and what happened and what went on and, 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 and all that, man, it was like, you know, I mean, I knew, I knew that this was just major evidence that my life was out of control, you know, and, uh, that's, that's when the Lord entered into my life, but it was different. Um, it was different than any other time that I'd tried to walk with the Lord and have a relationship with the Lord. It was, it was more like, the Lord, the Lord was, the Lord was letting me know that I couldn't do relationship. That I tried to do my way of a relationship with him and, 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 and my works wasn't going to get it done. My cleaning up my life wasn't going to get it done. And, um, I just remember that, that, uh, you know, I remember where I was. I remember, about the time of day it was, I remember the little Indian friend that I had, man, we, we was, uh, major dope heads together, smoked tons of weed and, and hydroponics. And, and I owned a, an organic hydroponic growing store in Bloomington and, and, uh, you know, God come behind the Holy spirit, come up behind me and, and wrapped. Uh, I mean, that's, that's what it felt like to me when it happened is that the Holy spirit just wrapped his arms around me and just basically just loved me and squeezed me. And something inside of me just began to cry and just began to bawl. And, and, uh, you know, my little Indian friend, Jeff, he come walking in the store and he said, man, he said, what's wrong with you? You're glowing. I'd had an encounter with God. It wasn't an encounter that I could have made up on my own. It was something that, that God allowed me to experience, man, because I knew my life was falling apart. 
And I knew the only way that I could really fix it was to surrender everything to Jesus, you know, and start a right kind of relationship with him, you know? And so I, 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 I think about how cold, uh, and, and, and I think about how empty I felt at that place in that time in my life. I, 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 I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's ever had this feeling, but it's like where the worm dieth not, you know, I mean, it, it's like, there's no satisfaction. I mean, there's no rest. There's no sleep there. I mean, you get to a place to where, you know, uh, I mean, a, a shot of heroin doesn't do it. I mean, a hundred Xanaxes over four days doesn't seem to touch it. You know, there's no amount of liquor that can that can do, it. and there's no amount of weed that you can put on top of all of it. it. It's it's like there's just this this emptiness and this loneliness and this separation within the person that that can only be touched by God. You know. And, um, I mean, for, for some of the, the, the trials and the troubles that, that, uh, that, that Joy and I have, have, uh, went through over the last 17 years since then, man, is just a testimony to the fact that God came into our life and, and began to develop a relationship with us. And, you know, and, and there was that period of time and, in, and, in, in, you know, where I had to sort this thing out with the Lord and, and I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, expect her to understand what was happening in my life and happening to me. And I couldn't expect her to necessarily want to come along. She tried to leave me, but God wouldn't allow it. And she wound up really with in a, in a situation where she didn't feel comfortable with putting her dad in a situation, living with him. And, and, and she didn't really want to come back. I don't think, I don't think she really wanted to, but she did. And, you know, I mean, and, and it was months of just, I mean, you ever been with someone or around someone and you, you just know that they're like done and they don't really, you don't, I mean, you know, but yet you know that you can't try to force him to love you anymore because you've hurt him so much and you've hurt him so bad. And it's like, man, I just got to get this thing right with God, man. You know, I just got to get this thing right with the Lord. The Lord's the only thing that can fix me and it's the Lord's the only thing that can fix us, man. And, and I can't get, I can't make her want the Lord, you know? And, and so, you know, there was, there was, there was six months, man, of, of, uh, I mean, throwing off everything. I mean, throwing off everything, throwing off everything. I mean, taking a good hard look at how we even got everything we had. You know, how we had come about it, how we had purchased it, where it had come from, what kind of hands it had went through, what kind of lies had brought it, what kind of deception had got it. I mean, we had to look at, I, I mean, and we just started emptying stuff out, giving stuff away. And I was going to church on Sunday and she was still smoking weed and smoking cigarettes and, and, you know, and she never even smoked before that, you know? I'm trying to throw off all this stuff that hinders me and and she's got Adapex in her purse and you know what I mean and you know and and uh it's a big test. How much you love her? You know, how much you love me? You know, are you willing to you know, get these things that have entangled you your whole life out of your life? Are you willing to be a witness and be a light and be a testimony, man, and in and, and the hope that one day, man, she'll follow, you know? She may not. You know what? You can have loved ones and kids, and and they may not be able to forgive, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, is on this journey. And, you know, there's people, God's putting these people in my path, and he's saying, hey, man, you know, you, 
you, you hurt this person. You hurt this person. I'm like, dang, God, that was 30 years ago, man. He's like, I don't care. You hurt them. You apologize to them. You, you make amends with them. And I, I remember a, a, a black girl, uh, Missy Brown, that, that, uh, that I was mean to in high school, just absolutely mean. Um, no, 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 no reason for it whatsoever. And, and I, and I seen her in Walmart, hadn't seen her for years and years and Lord said, tell her you're sorry, man. And I just looked at her right there and I said, Missy, I said, man, I said, it's good to see you. I said, but I owe you an apology and I I'm sorry, man, that, that, uh, you know, I, I made fun of you and called you names and, and she just began to bawl. And she just began to cry. And, uh, she said, I know you didn't really mean it. She said, but it's good to hear someone. I wasn't the only one. That was her life at that time and that in that period that in Bedford, Indiana. And it released something in her. It helped her. And you know, and and I and I think about you know, relationships with a past ex-wife and, and, and her in law and her family. And, 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 and we had a, we had a custody battle with my, with my daughter and, and, you know, and I mean, sometimes you just ain't thinking clearly, you know, and, and we got custody of my, my daughter and we, and we thought, well, let's go over to our in-laws and, and, and let's repent and let's tell them we're sorry for, for all the wrong we'd done and all the absent fatherism we'd had in our life with 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 her and we want to do right and do good and 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 you know i mean we we went there and 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 we, i mean they they just looked at me and said saved from what you can get as saved as you want to but i know who you are and i know what you've done and i know what you're capable of doing they ain't had any room for forgiveness for us. And I didn't have any right, really, to be honest with you, to expect them to. And we had to put our tail between our legs, keep the old mouth shut, turn back and get in the car, and leave with a bore of a busted relationship than what it was if I'd have even walked up that driveway. But as the years went by, see, do you want to run far or do you just want to run fast? It takes time to become that new creature. It takes time to develop new relationships with family members and loved ones where we've hurt them so deeply, man, that when they even see, they even see an instance of something that'll bring back something from the past, their gut reaction is to respond with hate and hatefulness, unforgiveness and bitterness. Their gut, their reaction is not, not because they don't want to help and love you. It's because they've been hurt by it so many times, right? You know, wouldn't it wouldn't it be wouldn't it be nice if even though we we I, I it's like some things that seem to be an impact. I'm just talking to you and sharing, you know, me my, my heart, man. But you know, I mean, I, I've got a I've got a daughter with a with a, an ex wife, and and she's a mess, man. I'm telling you, she's just a she's just an absolute mess, man. But wouldn't it be wouldn't it be wonderful that if if you could have a relationship with those bad decisions and then bad choices that we made in, in our life, uh, where, where the focus was really on the, 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 the children and the success and the, and, and, and the future. And, and, you know what I mean? And because, 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 because as much as we try to protect them and as much as we try to cover them and as much as we try to they're still going to at some point have a natural reaction or desire within them to try and heal this or mend this. You know, 
I, I mean, I have a I have a 30 some year old daughter, man, that absolutely hates me. You know, and there's really, really uh, 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 nothing I can do. I've repented. I've asked for forgiveness and, you know, and, 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 but man, I would, I would like to be able to be like-minded. I would like to be able to have, you know, a conversation and be able to have peace. And, and, and I, I think that it's possible. I, I do. I think that it's possible, but, but I, I've got to, I've got to be willing to run far. Because if I want that right now, right, I just push her away into more and more loneliness. We, we've tried to mend and we've tried to work things out. And, and boy, I'll tell you, it's sometimes you, know, you, ever, you ever try to mend and work a relationship and it feels like you're just walking on eggshells. <laughs> It's like the first thing, the first thing that you do or say in the wrong kind of, it's going to, oh, I mean, all hell's going to break loose, man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so I, I just thought about that. Um, we talked about that this morning at uh, Cornerstone and, and, uh, and then I, I thought about Acts chapter 20, uh, verse 24. I didn't share this with Cornerstone. I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, but but this is uh, basically it says, but I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And I think, Dave, we had a conversation maybe a little bit last week or the week before, and, and uh, I don't even remember what the instance was. I, I know you guys don't believe me when I say this, but oftentimes when there's a, a situation where where I, I have to correct or even maybe rebuke or 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 something of that nature, that oftentimes I I forgot. And yet it'll be it'll be something that that you'll hold on to for a week. It's like can't sleep it bothered me it's driving me crazy and 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 i can't remember but but dave did something and 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 he came to me and he told me and he was just tore up about it. i mean he'd been to town he'd be i mean he i remember what it is now he, he, trying to fix it before i got back i said dave we got we've had a crazy day today i mean really we had six hours of trying to uh, unplug poop and, you know, and, 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 and we had hours and, and somebody else's plumbing catastrophe over here. It was all this happened in the same day. I remember now I said, Dave, I'm not really worried about that right now. And I think that he thought, man, this is, he's going to be, he's going to be worried about that. Right. But yet at the same time, it's like the old ax head. It's like, I got to find it. I got to find it. I got to fix it. I got to get it right. It's good, right? I, I borrowed something. I want to bring it back in as good or better condition than what I took it in. It's good. I said, Dave, you got to show yourself some grace, man. And I think sometimes in our uh, running, okay, I, I, don't, I don't lean on or, or rely on cheap grace. I don't look at it in advance and say, okay, I'm going to screw this up and I'm going to screw you over and I'm going to treat you dirty. And, and then I'm going to apply grace. You know, I, no, I handle something wrong. I, I speak wrong. I, I, I didn't pay much attention or I wasn't attentive as I should have been. And, 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 and I see, I see where I went wrong. The fact that you even see where you went wrong is the miracle. And that's where you have to have grace. 
And and that's what that's what Paul I think is trying to say here. He's saying, you know, I I, I got to get over myself. I can't be too hard on myself. He's saying, but I do not, I, but I do not account my life of any value nor precious to myself. If only I may finish. I just want to finish. I just want to end well, finish well, because this thing that I do and this thing that I'm doing is not of mine. It is of the Lord's. This life that I have, these opportunities that I have, these relationships that I have, this relationship with that woman, this marriage with that woman, our future has been knitted together from past to present to future. It's God's purpose. But he says to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. In other words, Without the grace of God, we'd have never made it through the cold heart love. We'd have never made it. We'd have never made it by being by by in relationships where you feel like you've been abused, where you feel like you've been mistreated, where you feel like you've been talked to wrongly. You'd have, you'd have never made it. You'd have never ever got through it without the grace of God. You know. And then over in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? But only one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we do it to receive an imperishable wreath. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control for this reason. Lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. I struggled last night because I told somebody that I would be there today at two o'clock. Morning came, and I'm telling you what, I had excuses. Well, you know, I just got a toenail removed, and the dog stepped on my foot three times yesterday. Be real easy. Say, man, I can't march today. Can't be there, man. Love you, support you, man. I'm with you in spirit. <laughs> All the right things. That's my nap time. It's a day of rest, Lord. The day to look back at the Exodus and what you brought us out of and what you're bringing us to. And on the way to church this morning, I said, you know what? I'm going. I gave my word. I told him I would be there. So unless there's something that would prevent me from being there other than I just don't want to do it, I need to be there. You know, we'll just do the little things that we don't want to do that God asks us to do. You'll see a bigger picture there. May not be anything that you get out of it necessarily, but you'll you'll get to see a bigger picture and a bigger plan and a bigger purpose that God has going on. And so I met another pastor today that I've met before and we hadn't and 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 opened up the door for another relationship with another church to be able to partner on something in the future. It might not have happened if I hadn't have did what I said I would do. As I was walking, the sheriff beside me, he gave me a funny look and he said, how you doing? And I wasn't sure who he was. I said, I'm doing great. I'm blessed. And I just kept on marching. 
I said, that's the new sheriff. That's Greg Day. I said, are you Greg Day? He said, I am. He said, how you doing out there, David? And I got to walk half the square in a conversation with him about the future of Lawrence County Jail. We just got in for the first time under Sheriff Branham and Sheriff Branham's out and Sheriff Day's in and God put him beside me and put a conversation in our mouths between us. And I got to say to, he said, are you still coming in to the jail? I said, no, I haven't been going in. And, and we had a little conversation about that. And I said, but if there's anything we can do to help you or to serve you, let me know. I've just learned over the years, but I, I seem to forget. And I think you all have learned over the years too. And we seem to forget that oftentimes the things that we don't want to do the most are the things we need to be doing. The thing that we're reluctant to do or scared to do or afraid to do, not always, but oftentimes is something that we're supposed to be putting our foot into. So that was the little bit of the message and this morning with the uh, whole lot more of uh, uh, personal information kind of stuff. And I like Sunday nights because I think that we can just be real. I, I've enjoyed um, the opportunity. Last week we had an opportunity to speak at at Heltonville Turning Point and in. in uh, uh, be able to um, share with them about planning and goal setting and and things of that nature. And then this Sunday morning, I listened to to the pastor's message, and he was just building on what, and we was really building upon what he had 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 presented to the church from the first Sunday of the year. And and uh, man, it's just good to be able to uh, lock arms with people, be in partnership with people, and, and see that the common goal, man, is is you know. Uh, to be able to come together, run far, you know, and, and, and this little project that, that we're doing with, with Cornerstone up here is building so many relationships with so many people, you know, and, and people are really excited about giving to this, this type of event and this type of project, man. And they're really, really looking forward forward to this and, and we've had a lot of really really good pot that's good for god man that's good for the kingdom of god you know and and uh we're blessed uh to be able to uh be able to participate with in that i i got this privilege this morning and i'm going to close um and i want you guys to you don't know this uh this person and i don't know i don't know her name um but praying for uh, some of the folks that came forward at the altar this morning at Cornerstone. Um, I, I wonder sometimes when God, when, 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 when I'm, when I'm speaking and God then takes my direction straight to a certain person or to a certain row of, of young people or something. And, and you begin to speak to them, you know, and you ever, you ever been in a service and, and the pastor just kind of single you out and just speak to you? Okay. If that's ever happened uh, to you, uh, there's something, there should be something in, inside of you that, that's like, I needed that. I, I, I really, really needed that, you know. Uh, but there was, there was a young girl. She was, she was standing right here. She was just bawling. I mean, we were singing, God is so good. She's just crying, man. I mean, she's probably 16 years old, man. You know what I mean? And she's just, she's just getting just tore up. And I just said, I, I got to pray for you. I said, can you tell me just a little bit about what's going on so I know how to pray for you? She said, yes, my mom and dad are both addicts. And I need help. I don't know when it's going to happen. That's what I told her. I said, I don't know when it's going to happen. 
But God hears your cries right now. And he's going to begin to move upon your mom and dad. And I don't know when, but I know he's coming after them. And it would be wonderful, wouldn't it, to see that whole family in the house of God. Those are the things that I'm used to seeing happen in church. Those are the things that I still believe God can do in a family because that's what he'd done in ours. That's what he'd done in Joy and I's life. He didn't just bring us into the church. He brought our kids into the church, and we was all at the altar, and we was both addicts. And that's what I was trying to display, express to the church. If God can do something like that through someone like Dave Walker, Marshall, myself, he can do that with anybody in this room. You know? So I don't know her name, but I, I just want you to remember, and Dave, I want you to put on the prayer wall up there that her whole family would be saved. That's biblical. I pray for the salvation of that whole family. Those are the kind of things that I anticipate this year. God loves you, man. God loves them. And when our relationships are in a broken and torn up in a bad kind of place. It's not because God doesn't love us. You know? Uh, we've messed up or went wrong somewhere. Don't want to admit it or we don't want to be, hum we don't want to be humble or, or we don't want to apply grace or is that right? This is going to be a, a, a year of, of, uh, Restoration, man, you know. I believe that, or your release. This now that we're there. We will get there. That's 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 past. That's, that's already done. That's already gone. That's 2022. Okay. No more excuses. Now that we're there. Okay. The message. For this year. Real simple. God loves you. <laughs> we wouldn't be anywhere where we are. What for God loving us? As bad or as messed up as we can do things, God still loves me. I need to apply a little grace to that. <laughs> You need to apply a little grace to somebody too. Not just yourself. Apply a little grace to some people in your life. Amen. Praise God. I'm not saying that to get your grace towards me. <laughs> I'm saying that because it's biblical. Okay. Amen.